hello, hello. My name is Juji. Welcome to my human design channel. If you're new here, this is a space where I make videos about celebrity chart analysis. I also talk about the human design system itself. And sometimes I make videos where I interview people about their experience working with me. Today is a very special day because I am doing another analysis for Harry and Meghan based on the recent documentary that was released on Netflix. I already did analysis for this couple on this channel and it got more views than any other video, so it's very clear to me that these are people who everybody wants to understand and know about. Obviously, Netflix is no fool, and they know just how mesmerizing these two are. So I wanted to dig a little deeper, and I love that there is this documentary that I have to mirror everything that I'm going to say, because human design really expresses itself through people, and I'm really looking forward to being able to do that. But before I do, I just want to remind all of you that my information will be in the show notes. I do readings for individuals, for partners, I do relationship coaching, all of that information will be in the show notes. And you guys, don't forget that my four-part masterclass is now available for only $99. Oh my goodness. It's four parts, like I said, and it is an incredible resource for understanding yourself, the needs that you have in your relationships, how you relate to other people, how you compromise to other people and how we as human beings tend to be attracted to those that are very different from us and how to manage that when it comes to your relationships. So this masterclass is an incredible way of understanding human design. You can also go to my website and make a chart for yourself, a chart for you and a loved one. This isn't just about romantic partnerships. It's also about understanding how you relate to your family. I just did a video about how my mom and my relationship has really evolved through this process. So I really wanted to give you guys this tool and be able to help you do this for yourself. So, okay, Harry and Megan. The way that I want to structure this video is a little bit different. We're going to start with the macro and then get to the micro, right? Because there's a bigger picture here when it comes to what we're looking at through the lens of this documentary. Well, one of the things that I was thinking about the whole time I was watching this is the fact that the majority of the human population has an open head center. Every open center has a not self theme. And in this case, the open head center is about thinking about things that don't matter. So why is this important to understand? Well, it's important because it helps us to see why these tabloids have such influence over people. I remember watching the documentary and Megan saying something along the lines of, well, I figured that these were just tabloids. This was just gossip. And so nobody was going to believe what they were printing about me. And then she came face to face with somebody who said, you know, I think it's really not very nice what you're doing to your father. It was the first time that she realized just how influential these tabloids really were. And it broke her. So that's an important thing to understand is why we even care about these two, right? Objectively, does Harry and Meghan's relationship have any bearing on your everyday life? In fact, do any celebrities have any bearing on your everyday life? When I'm talking about having an open head center in a reading, I often refer to this idea that the open head center wants to know what Kim Kardashian had for breakfast, but what she had for breakfast has absolutely nothing to do with our everyday lives. So it's sort of funny in a way, but it also shows us why we're so preoccupied with what's going on outside of ourselves. Instead of understanding that it can be entertaining, it can be fun, but when it turns to the dark side, that's when things get precarious. And that's really what I want to talk about in terms of this bigger picture is the duality that we're in right now. I talked in one of my videos about how 2027 represents this really big shift in humanity. And what this shift is all about is this polarization of two sides, right? And we can see this in the political arena. We can see this when it comes to people's opinion about health care, about the environment, about all sorts of different things. And Meghan and Harry are no different. We either believe them or we don't. 
And this duality is natural when it comes to the way that our minds think, because we see things in black and white. But what human design shows us is the itness of being. There's nothing wrong or right about the way that we see each other's design. It's just what is. And that's why I love it so much, because it is neutral. It's completely neutral. When we look at somebody's chart, it's not wrong or bad. It's just about who they are and they can't help being who they are. They can't help showing us this person, even if it doesn't make any sense to us. And it's not supposed to because we are all as different as fingerprints. So on that note, let's take a look at their charts and dig a little bit deeper than we did last time. Okay, so this is Meghan Markle's chart again. She is a generator. She is sacral authority, split definition, a 5-1 profile on the left angle cross of refinement. The first time we talked about Megan, I really highlighted her 5-1 profile because I talk about this a lot. A lot of celebrities are 5-1s because the fifth line gets projected on as the hero and the savior. But the flip side of that is that if you don't deliver what people expect you to deliver, in other words, if you don't live up to their projection of who you are, then they'll stone you in the town square. That's what happens to heretics, which is what the fifth line is. So in a way, when Megan first was introduced to the general public, she was seen as this beautiful, incredibly articulate, humanitarian person, and she eventually fell from grace because of the way that the tabloids were portraying her. And this was very difficult for her to accept because as a fifth line, she's used to that projection field. She's used to the way that people see her as this hero. And being knocked off of that pedestal must have been very, very destabilizing for her. Now, something that we don't normally talk about on this channel, but I'm going to get into, is her sun personality. The position of the sun in any person's chart is 70% of who they think they think they are. And in this case, Megan's sun personality is in gate 33, the gate of privacy. Retreat, active withdrawal, and the transformation of weak position into strength. I mean, if this isn't exactly what they did, I don't know what is. They retreated to their secluded space in Canada and then eventually to LA, and they reemerged with this Netflix documentary. We haven't heard much from them since they did that, since they had their second child. And now all of a sudden we're being presented with quote unquote, their side of the story. And I feel like that's so appropriate with Megan's channel 1156, which is all about teaching through storytelling. It's all about explaining something based on experience, right? That's what the Ajna is. It's a conceptual center and the throat is the way for it to express itself. So that's exactly what this documentary is all about. Now, one of the controversial things about this documentary is that they were paid very highly for it. And we believe that this somehow proves that it was done for nothing other than material gain. But as you can see, Megan is on the left angle cross of refinement. And refinement does mean liking the finer things in life, not to mention that she has channel 214, which is all about a material direction in life. Now, as she mentioned many times, she has been a humanitarian and somebody who has been working for her various causes in this world. And people who do that are very aware that you cannot affect real change in this world without resources. So even though we may find fault in the fact that it was in poor taste to be accepting this kind of money from Netflix, it does feel true that it's just naturally who she is and it's naturally what is required for her to be able to do the work that she wants to do. And on the note of the 214, let's take a look at Prince Harry again. So Prince Harry is a manifesting generator. He has emotional authority, split definition, 6-2 profile on the left angle cross of informing. 
And what was he doing if not informing us about how he saw things as they played out through the media and through the institution of the monarchy? And as you can see here, Harry also has this channel 214, which means that they have a companionship channel. And I just talked about this in my last two videos about how important and how connected two people are who have a companionship channel. I also want to point out that Harry has this channel 1057, the channel of perfected form, which is a design of survival. And I don't know how many times he expressed in this documentary that them leaving the monarchy seemed to be a matter of survival. It seemed to be a matter of life or death for them because Meghan was fearing for their safety. She was fearing for their family. And so he felt that there was no choice but to remove them from the situation. And I'm sure that it was very closely tied with the emotional experience. He is an emotional being after all. I'm sure it was tied to the emotional experience of losing his mother because of the way that the press was treating her. And he did not want history to repeat itself. He was convinced, in fact, that eventually his mother was going to end up living in Los Angeles. So he felt like he was just protecting his family in a way that she was not able to be protected. And that's a very big deal to him. I can see that. So here's the two of them together. Separately, they are split definition in their designs. And together in their composite, they are a single definition with all nine centers defined, which is very, very insulated when it comes to being in a relationship, not to mention their five electromagnetic connections. One of the reasons why I wanted to make this video is because one of the things that I hear people questioning over and over and over again is if their connection is actually authentic or if it's somehow this like um, artificially created bubble by Megan. But honestly, I don't think I need to look at a human design chart to see that these two people genuinely care for one another. The way that their body language is, the way that she looks at him, the way that he expresses his adoration for her. There doesn't seem to be anything phony about it. And then when you peel back the curtain and you see what's underneath it through their design, it's very obvious to me that they are connected emotionally. They're connected through this tribal caring for one another and for their family. They're connected intellectually through the work that they like to do. They have a creative spark together through this channel 1-8, which is all about a contribution in this world. And it seems that their contribution that they were here to give was really aligned for the two of them, which is something that they bonded over from the very beginning. And they do have an ambition together. They do have this desire to be of service in an ambitious way. You know, this is not about, you know, like opening up one school or like helping one community. This is about the world. This is about the collective. This is about making sure that their tribe is healthy, happy, taken care of through the accumulation of material. And then it's about understanding that there's a bigger picture out there. The causes that they talk about are, you know, equal rights for women. And she even mentioned Me Too in the documentary, which was apparently something that you weren't supposed to be talking about as a royal. The royal causes are not here to be controversial, right? And that's something that Harry cannot accept. Remember, Harry's a sixth line. And I talked about this with his father as well who was unable to bend to the requests of the monarchy because not only is he an individual, but as this future-facing person, he just can't get behind this idea that you can't marry somebody that you love, you can't marry somebody who's been divorced. But that's sort of where his rebellion of the monarchy ends. He was able to ensure that he himself, meaning Charles, was allowed to marry Camilla Parker Bowles, who is now the queen consort, which is unheard of in terms of the traditions of not being able to be divorced. But 
Harry took it one step further and said, you know what? I don't need to be a part of this monarchy, this institution. The way things are run here are not something that I can get behind. And because of this duality, we're either celebrating that or we're vilifying him. We're either celebrating Megan for shaking things up and bringing new life into this monarchy, or we're demonizing her by saying that she was actually the person who manipulated Harry away from his family, which, by the way, I mean, Harry has a long history of being a rebel in this family, so I don't actually believe that there's anything new about this. It was just an incentive. I mean, he's a manifesting generator. He's here to wait to respond. He can't just decide that he doesn't want to be a part of this institution for no good reason. The response he's having is to his family. The caring that he's expressing is towards the people that he loves. And he has this emotional expression of the 1222, which is all about this social grace, this ability to connect to other people through emotionality. And he's trying to appeal to the masses. He's saying, what would you do if you were in my position? Not to mention the fact that really none of this was really all as calculated as we believed that it was. That's something that I feel the documentary was really great at showcasing is that it was just putting one foot in front of the other in front of the other, which is what it means to be a generator or an MG, which they both are. So this is not about laying this monumental plan from the moment that they met it was seeing how things turned out and the way things turned out is how they are right now but it doesn't mean it's going to stay that way forever this is what they need at the moment this retreat this regrouping if you will and then telling the story i mean harry also has this gate 11 in his sun earth so it's really about telling stories emotionally appealing to everybody and explaining to the world what it is that they went through now again i'm not here to choose sides really i'm not here to say that if you believe what you believe about megan and harry is wrong not at all it's about explaining to you who these people are and how they're actually displaying their designs, even if they're not aware of exactly how it is that they're doing that, because we're helpless in doing that, right? We're helpless in expressing who we are when who we are is being put under the microscope over and over and over again. And in a lot of ways, I make these videos because I want to help you understand all of these different things about yourself to help you understand how you're actually completely helpless in the way that you express yourself and that there's nothing wrong inherently with who you are. Who you are is perfect exactly as it is. It's only the mind that makes us believe that there's actually something to fix. All right, guys, I think this is a really good place to wrap it up. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to get notified every time I drop a new video. I also want to remind everybody that I run an online community for women who are all practicing strategy and authority through human design. I was wondering if you would like to join us. Do you want a support system where you can discuss the challenges of following strategy and authority? Would you like to hear from other people about their experience? Would you like to have access to other human design practitioners? Would you like to be a part of a sisterhood or a tribe that's here to help you navigate these uncertain times? Please click below and check it out. I would love to have you be with us. All right, guys, if you have any comments or questions, please put them down below and please nominate another couple if there's somebody else you'd like me to do an analysis for. Until next time, ciao for now.